Ah, Mario games. There sure are a lot of them. And with a legacy as big as Mario and a character who's had a ton of games, some are obviously going to be much more well known than others. So I decided that it'd be a great idea to look at some of those underrated gems from the Mario series that people don't really talk about that much. So I just thought that I'd finally give those games the spotlight that they deserve for once. So I'm just going to be taking a look at a few of them. I don't know exactly how many, but I'm just going to be taking a look at a few. No specific number. So that said, let's get right into the first one. So the next game I'll be talking about is Puzzle and Dragon Super Mario Edition. Now, whether you want to count this as a Mario game or not, it's, it is really up to you. But since it has the Mario cast and the Mario enemies and the Mario worlds that we're used to, I just figured I might as well count it here. I remember when I was younger, I saw Mario on the cover. I'm like, wow, it's Mario. I want to buy it. Little did I know that it actually wasn't a Mario game. But I'm just like, hey, I might as well give it a shot. I played it, and I absolutely loved the game. Seriously, this has to be one of the most underrated Mario games out there. Again, if you want to call it that. So, I don't know if Puzzle and Dragons is like a series or something. But if it is, for anyone who's played any of the past games, it kind of plays like that if it is. So, basically, if you, and if you never played it, I'm going to describe to you what it is. So, basically, on the bottom screen, there's a bunch of icons. And then, you, um, with the touch screen, you use the stylus to... Grab one of the icons, and then you can move it around wherever you want, trying to mix up um, all the icons. And and so, and after you do that, what you, then what you end up doing is... To, so, as you can see, you have six characters to choose from. So, you get char you get some enemies to recruit by your side randomly, which that, that part kind of sucks, but that they get dropped randomly for you to play as. But other than that, it's still really good. So, every character has a... Icon, whether it be a tanuki leaf, a fire flower, a penguin suit, or anything. So, if you make a match of like the penguin suits, then only the characters that have the penguin suits will attack. Nobody else will. So you have to make a match based on the character's color that you have. Which is why I always recommend having diversity in your team selection. So, yeah, there's actually quite a lot of strategy that goes into this game. And also, I'm just going to say it right now. This is one of the hardest, by far hardest, Mario games out there. This game is no joke. I, even if you somehow beat the first eight worlds, if you like beat the game, after that, there's eight extra worlds that are so god dang impossible that I've never even beat the game. Alright, sure, you could say I my brain just sucks, and you wouldn't be wrong, but it's so God dang hard. I even say this is harder than the lost levels. Like, holy shamoly. Good luck trying to beat this game. Anyway, yeah. The, I've established that the game is really freaking difficult. But the, but the puzzle mechanics itself are really, really fun. And just having a hard Mario game for a change, even if it's not a platformer, is still really refreshing. And there's also a lot of other cool things you can do. Like, you can get items in stages to mix and match characters, like... So, you, for example, you can make Koopa Troopa, you can give it a wing to make a, a paratroopa, or you can even give it a P-Wing and a mushroom to make it a big flying Koopa Troopa. So there's really a lot of possibilities in this game. And you can upgrade other characters' abilities, which make their uh, special abilities to go one, activate one turn faster. So yeah, I, if, if you have a 3DS, I definitely would recommend checking out this game. Oh, did I mention that the normal, that the normal Puzzle and Dragons is also combined with this game? Yeah, it's like a Mario U Deluxe situation. One is Luigi U, and one is Mario U. Except here, one is Mario Puzzle, Dra Puzzle and Dragons, and the other one is just normal Puzzle and Dragons. Mario is the hard one, and the Puzzle and Dragons is the easy one. Kind of ironic seeing how most Mario games are really easy. But yeah, if you're looking for a challenging Mario game or a fun puzzle game, this is definitely a game that you should check out if you have a 3DS. You will not regret it. The next game we got here is Mario Super Sluggers. I always thought it was Super Mario Sluggers, but Mario Super Sluggers. I personally like the way I said it better, so I'm just going to keep saying it. That oh, I'm joking. I'm going to say it the normal way. But yeah, I do like the way I, I titled the game better. 
anyway, yeah, I, I've talked about this game quite a few times before. Like, if you see my Ranking Mario video, I always, I usually talk about how great this game is. And, I mean, my opinion still hasn't changed. This is a dang good game. Just dang. It's, it's really, really good. The reason it's underrated is because, unlike golf and uh, Mario Tennis, which they need to stop making so many and focus on the other sports for once, this also is applied to Mario Strikers as well, but I'll get to that in a bit. So, yeah, this game, this the Mario Baseball series never became a full series like golf and tennis did, which is a shame because I honestly like the Mario Baseball series the most out of all the Mario sports games. Which, yeah, and like I said, that is a shame that it never continued. But the fact that there was also a bunch of other baseball games on the Wii, like Wii Sports, and the success of that really overshadowed this game. But since there are many less baseball games on the Switch, if any at all, I definitely think a sequel on the Switch would do incredibly well and would bring the series back to the high, back to the light and would make it much more popular than it deserves. So, yeah, this game also has a buttload of content. It's got a single player mode, a toy field mode. I never really understood what that was yet, but I'm I'm, I'm slowly starting to learn. And there's a bunch of mini games in there too. And of course the normal um, uh, baseball mode has a lot of customization. You can use items. There's a lot of different stages you can use. The music is absolutely slapping. It peaches Ice Garden, the remix of, of Inside the Castle Walls from Mario 64. Dang, I added that song to my Mario playlist. That's, that's so good. But anyway, yeah, this game is, is, is just damn good. This is a damn good game. And I would definitely recommend checking it out if you have a Wii. Because it is the best baseball game that you could ever find on, that, on the Wii. Also, please just give me a seagull for the Switch, Nintendo. That's all I want. So the next game we'll be talking about is Mario Strikers. And this is the exact same scenario as Mario Sluggers. Or Mario Baseball, whichever you want to call it. But I'm calling it Mario Sluggers because I like the name better. So, yeah, this is pretty much the exact same situation as that. What do I mean? Well, the series died on its last entry of the Wii, which is unfortunate because, again, I think it got overshadowed by much more popular soccer games on the Wii. And although there are more soccer games on the Switch than uh, baseball games, I still think it could do really well on there. And, again, just like Super Mario Sluggers will bring the series back to... Back to the highlight that it deserves and could honestly make it a very iconic Mario sports series instead of just tennis. I don't like tennis anymore, Nintendo. It's getting bland. You gotta make more. Oh, oh we gotta make another Mario tennis instead of giving us something original. Anyway, my, my Mario tennis rant aside, yeah, I, I just really want a new Mario Strikers and Sluggers game. But there's nothing really much for me to add here. It's pretty much the exact same scenario as Sluggers. I just, just thought I'd put this here because, I mean, I'm not wrong. This is really underrated. And even though it's just the exact same scenario, it's it's still a different game. So I thought I might as well just put it here. So yeah, that's really all I have to say for this one. Exact same situation as Sluggers. If it was on the Switch, it, it, the series would be much more popular. So last game here... I, sw I promise, this is the last Mario sports game here, okay? D just trust me. I know th three of them have been Mario sports games, but those are some of the most underrated in the Mario series ever. So I, I just thought I'd just include them. Anyway, but out of all the Mario sports games, Mario sports mix is by far the most underrated. People don't seem to like this game that much because of the four sports that are included, which are dodgeball, volleyball, hockey, and basketball. They aren't in depth as they should be. But in my opinion, I don't feel that way. There's still items and coins and special shots. And there's still a lot of strategy in each for how you want to play. Plus, there's more difficulty options, which add a lot of variety. Plus, there is just absolutely an absurd number of stages for something like for a game like this. Just, just dang. And all of them have their own unique stage gimmicks, too. So I personally don't see this as an issue. So, so how are the four sports, actually? Dodgeball is personally my favorite because I just love throwing balls at people. I don't know if that sounded out of context or not, but don't take that. Anyway, yeah, I really like dodgeball. Volleyball is pretty good too. It's personally my least favorite out of all of them, but it's still really, really fun. 
Oh, I really like basketball too. There's a lot of strategy that goes into that. Whether you want to pass it to your teammate or you want to try to take the ball and get an item. There's a lot of strategy into that one. I mean, and as a hockey player myself, I've always wanted a Mario hockey game. And having hockey as a game in this game, it, it, it just makes me so happy. It just makes me so happy that hockey's finally getting some love. So, yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, I mean I'll, I'll, I'm obviously going to like the game for that alone. But, no, not, that's not all, just the four sports. There's also mini games for each, which, in my opinion, are arguably better than the actual sports themselves. There's one where you got to dodge bob bombs. There's another one where you got to throw fruit into a Petey Piranha's mouth. There's another one where you have to swing your hockey stick to knock other players off the stage. And there's another one where you have to volley balls. Um, how do I explain this? And, like, the remix to Mario music, especially like the Mario athletic theme. Oh, gosh. The, the music, that, those remixes are just absolutely slapping. And if that wasn't enough, there is a story mode in the game. Yes, a story mode. It may not be on the level of Mario's Super Slugger's um, story mode, but it is definitely really good. Well, it's actually called Tournament Mode, which it's pretty self-explanatory. But once you get near the end, there's actually a little secret area you can unlock. And that basically kind of acts like a story mode inside the tournament, which I think is absolutely incredible. Although, yes, the Mario characters represented in the game are a little bit lacking, it makes up for that with the inclusion of Final Fantasy and Dragon Quest characters like Slime, Kakitar, Ninja, White Mage, Black Mage, and Moogle. Which I'm not the biggest fan of, but for, but for two Mario sports games, I definitely think that's good. I definitely do think that's good. So yeah, I really like the game overall and would definitely recommend checking it out. It's one of the best offerings you can get on the Wii for Mario, in my opinion. Well, behind the two Mario Galaxies, the new Super Mario Bros. series, and Mario Sluggers and Strikers. But I mean, still, it's still like the sixth best, so that's not, still gotta count for something, right? I felt like I had to include a main series Mario game here somewhere. And out of all of them that I could think of, I think Super Mario Land 2 is by far the most underrated. Although, yes, the original Super Mario Land is a little underrated, I think it kind of deserves to be because, yes, although it was the first Mario platforming game on, a, on handhelds, I think the game was overall kind of lacking and the level design wasn't really that great. But that can't be said for a sequel. This, oh, Mario Land 2. Oh, this is a great game we got here. It's nowhere near as good as the likes of the Mario games we have today. Well, for the most part, I'm looking at you, Mario Bros. 2. And I'm looking at you, Mario Bros. U. And wow, I didn't know that rhymed. But anyway, yeah, th this game is simply just really, really good. I mean, there's a level, I mean, there's literally a level where you play inside of Mario's crotch. Well, it's a Robo Mario, but still. Yeah, it's pretty, it's pretty sweet, it's pretty sweet. There's also a world where it's inside of a turtle and you can, and you can go inside a whale. That's really cool. Oh yeah, did I tell you that there's actually a world map? Yep, there's actually a world map on a portable Mario console. Yeah, I know Mario games today have that, but back then on the Game Boy, that was simply incredible. And the level design is much better than it ever was in the original Super Mario Land. And the power-ups are much better too. Sure, they don't have the Super Bowl flower anymore, I believe. But the, the, the carrot suit, it just immediately makes up for it. It just immediately makes up for it. In my opinion, this is definitely one of the best Game Boy games out there, and it's definitely a great Mario adventure. It's much better than the first game, and in my opinion, definitely deserves to be recognized more. Maybe a Super Mario Land 3 for Switch? No? Yeah, I didn't think so either. But, hey, I could always ask. So the next game we'll be talking about is Mario Party 9. This game is underrated in one specific certain instance. And that circumstance is that the game is actually good. This game is is un, is not underrated for the people who think that it's absolutely terrible because almost every person thinks that except for me. Yeah, I know I'm a rebel, but I personally think the game is fantastic in my opinion. I think it's fantastic. I don't mind the car, okay? I don't mind the goddamn car. All right. So yeah, uh, yes, although it would be nice to, you know, roam around normal boards. I, th I don't think the car was necessarily that bad of an idea. And I think the execution for it here is certainly done well enough. 
that the point that I actually kind of like it. And the fact that it was only used for two games is actually kind of a shame to me, especially seeing what they did with Super Mario Party afterward. Yeah, I know, I still haven't changed my opinion on it, that I don't like it. But anyway, yeah, the boards each have their own unique gimmicks, and most of them are fun. And this game was more created for less of skill and more of luck, which I am personally okay with. I'm personally okay with that, because it offers a much more even experience for everybody. Sure, though, mini games do require some skill, but I mean, if you, I, how I explain this? Yes, the mini games do mean a lot, but there's still a lot of uh, mini stars you can collect on the board too, so that if you're terrible at all the mini games, there still is a chance that you can win. And although yes, having dice box, having dice box be the only items in the game is slightly bad, but I mean, I I think the game is fantastic. Oh, don't even, I did, don't even get me started with the mini games. Those are just simply fantastic. I really like the one where you have to guess and go through the doors to get to the bottom. I really like the one where you, where you have to not land in the freezing water and jump from iceberg to iceberg onto a giant ship. I really like the one where you have to mash the buttons. Because, uh, yes, although many people hate it, I personally like the button masher ones. Even though I always get wrecked by the hardest CPUs because I'm a terrible button masher. Yeah, the, there is quite a lot of great mini games in this one. There's also some side modes too. There's a story mode, and although it's real, literally just replaying all the boards, it's still nice. It's still a really nice feature to have, and the side modes are pretty good too. Even if they are just primarily based around you know playing the mini games, and the music is absolutely slapping here too. I really don't get why people hate this game so much. Oh wait, I do. The car. But I'm a rebel, and I don't mind the car, okay? Look, I'm sorry. I just had to include this one here. I know Mario Sports Mix, I said, was the last Mario Sports game I'd be talking about. But I'm sorry. I, I just couldn't not talk about this one. Mario Hoops 3-on-3. Three three. This is another incredibly underrated Mario Sports game. But honestly, I don't know why he this one's forgotten, honestly. I don't really know why. Well, I can see why stuff like slug Sluggers, Strikers, and even Sports Mix are underrated. Because for Sluggers and Strikers, there were other soccer and baseball games on the console. I can't really think of a single base basketball. I can't really think of a single basketball game on the DS. So the so one featuring Mario and the fact that it's a basketball game on the three at DS on the three on on the DS finally is really shocking to me that it's so forgotten. Especially since the game is incredible. I really like that you can use all of the actions, well, except for moving, with the touch screen. That's, that's really a lot. You can dribble, you can move, you can block. And if you, if you do stuff in certain patterns, you can even do special shots. There's really quite a lot of variety you can do. And the item system is great, too. You can get coins to improve your score. And, of course, Mario Kart items. Not only that, but every single stage has a completely unique gimmick. And the gameplay is fun. There's also a lot of side modes. Of course, there's a tournament mode, obviously. But there's also quite a few mini games in there, too, where you want to try to beat something as fast as possible. I really like the one where you have to get 100 coins when the shells fly out at you. That one's really fun. That one is quite the amount of fun. But my only real gripe with the game is that it's really freaking hard to unlock some of the characters. Like, I've never even unlocked Fly Guy yet, which... I think unlocking him is really freaking absurd when it really shouldn't be. But overall, I do think that this is a really great game. And I definitely would like to see a sequel on the Switch. Unfortunately, though, I think this will always be forgotten. Because I don't think we're going to get a sequel for it anytime soon. Although, it really, really would be awesome. So there we have it. Those are the Mario games that I think are incredibly underrated. What do you think? Do you agree? Do you disagree? Do you have any other Mario games that you think are underrated that I didn't discuss in this video? Leave your thoughts down in the comments below. I read and respect all comments. And I just want to let you know that I officially opened up a Gamer27 Discord server where we can chat and laugh about the most random things imaginable. So if you're interested, the link to it will be in the description below. Be prepared tomorrow for a brand new video coming. I'm not going to tell you what it is. Just have to wait till it comes out. Alright, thank you guys so much for watching. Bye.